Have you started feeling like no matter how hard you try and how much effort you put into attracting a life partner that you keep facing the same disappointments, the same frustrations and the same heartbreaking results? Have you started throwing in the towel and lowering your expectations in terms of what might be possible for you to experience in this lifetime in terms of intimacy? If this feels or sounds like you, today I'm going to share a few grounding steps you can take to find your strength again and get back on the path to experiencing the exact level of love you want in this lifetime, even if you've started losing hope. It's a heavy feeling of Groundhog Day that happens when you want something deeply, like a super strong connection with someone, and you keep putting yourself out there, and no matter how you end up doing things, you still face some level of pain. Maybe you get breadcrumbed, maybe you get ghosted, maybe you get disrespected, maybe you get ignored, maybe you try super hard and still find yourself at the other end of someone who doesn't appreciate your greatness and can't experience your awesomeness. So if you're going through some experience like this right now, the first step to changing this is to reconnect with that light inside of you that so far has refused to give up, to acknowledge that there's something inside that tells you intuitively there's more for me to experience than I have so far and I refuse to let go of that light. I refuse to let go of that dream. I refuse to let go of that notion that epic love is out there for me in this lifetime. And I'm not asking you to fall into this illusion of what's possible. I'm telling you that after working with so many women in all different walks, walks of life from different backgrounds, different love challenges, that it is possible to experience a deep level of intimacy, even if you never have in the past, but it's going to require a few steps. But the first one is acknowledging that there's something inside of you that's a part of you that refuses to give up and give it some breathing room, give it some light. Step number two is start in a, as many ways as possible letting go of the shame of where you think you should be right now. You have to take the kindest approach possible instead of the roughest approach possible. It is very normal for you to feel like there's something wrong inside of you because you haven't been able to experience this thing that in your heart and mind you feel should be natural. So the first part of letting go of the shame is recognize that you've been sold a lie. From the moment you were born, Till now, you've been shown ideas and pictures and movies and books around love that is of the epic kind that comes naturally without any skill or real effort from the part of the people who are experiencing it. So if you go back and recognize that you are seeking right now a type of love that has never fully been experienced up until now in history, and you understand that what you want is possible, but it's going to require more skill, more know-how than perhaps the one that you've been given, then you go from a place that says there's something flawed in me because I haven't naturally experienced this level of love into I haven't yet developed the skills that I need to be able to attract the right partner, to vet the right partner, to enter the right relationship and to sustain that relationship. Because when you take this from a flaw inside of you to perhaps a flaw in strategy, then you can look at yourself with more grace you can recognize that what people have sold you as what's normal and natural to experience may not be accurate and that even though it's possible to experience a deep level of intimacy and light and connection with someone, it's going to require more skill. And when you can focus on the skill instead of the flawedness of your being, then you can change this in a much faster way. Third step, you need to take a break to figure out what's really causing you to not move forward. And it may be something that you have not considered before. Let me give you an analogy. Imagine that you're driving in a car and you get this light that turns on that says check engine. There's two ways to fix that problem. One is the superficial way, which means take that little light bulb out and no longer does it show that there's a problem with the engine. The other one is to dive deep and figure out what's the problem with the engine that's causing this light to show up. And that's what my invitation is. My invitation is for you to recognize that of all the things you're doing, there might be one or two that are the biggest bulk of the pain that you're experiencing and without recognizing what they are, you're bound to repeat them again and again. So something I've done to make it easier for you to recognize the true root cause that's keeping you single instead of the symptom is created a quiz that you can take in about 60 seconds that will show you in very simple terms the number one reason you're still single. All you have to do if you want to understand what's really showing up for you is go to the first link in the description of this video. You'll find a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions 
and in the next 60 seconds or so, you'll be shown uh, two things. The answer to the question why you're still single, that's the root cause versus symptom, and then a report that's going to show you what's the next specific step based on your unique challenge, your blind spot, that you can start working on today to attract the type of relationship you want in a fraction of the time. Step number four, once you understand the true root cause that's keeping you single, is commit to dating as a spiritual journey. You're not doing this for the guy, you're not even doing this for the relationship, you're doing this for something bigger. So when you understand that dating can be a journey for evolution, for healing, for growing, for becoming a more gifted human being, then you commit to the process of dating as a spiritual journey to evolve. And the way that works is you're going to learn certain skills and you're going to express certain needs in ways that you meditating in the mountain or talking to your girlfriends, drinking wine would never have the chance to experience and open and heal. So because your commitment is to growing and evolving, then you take every step of the way in the dating journey as a mechanism for you to become stronger, for you to become more expressive, for you to vet men more powerfully, for you to learn how to set boundaries with grace, for you to own your worth and your awesomeness. And if you do it this way, then every part of the journey makes you stronger. And when things don't work out in a given context, you are still committed to the process that's going to, at the end of the day, turn you into a human being that will be more gifted and that will have more skills than the one who would have maybe kept herself uh, to herself. Step number five is you commit to working on the 5% solution. Every person who wants to accomplish something they haven't experienced before has multiple different steps along the way. And there's going to be steps in your situation that are unique to you, whether it's your confidence, whether it's your needs and your ability to express them powerfully, whether it's your capacity to vet men powerfully, whether it's the strategy of how to show up with a full set of ex expressiveness and radiance that wasn't there before, there's gonna be something that's going to create the biggest bulk of difference for you. And part of what makes this process a fulfilling one is to discover what is that 5% for you? That's why working with someone sometimes is so helpful because you can work on those things that create the biggest bulk of change for you instead of a bunch of things that may not move the needle forward. Step number six is if you want to really get there, if you want to not give up hope, if you want to go the distance, is you start celebrating the smallest wins. You stop treating the experience of finding a life partner as a binary experience where zero is I haven't experienced it and one is I found my guy. There's gonna be so many different shades of gray in that black and white scenario that can give you a feeling of growth that can honor the path that you're going into. So you celebrate every time you show up for yourself even though you, you, you wanted to really to stay inside your house, you celebrate that. If you smile more powerfully than before, you celebrate that. If you ask better questions before you connect with someone, you celebrate that. If you go on a date where you're able to express your needs in a different way than you have in the past, you celebrate that. Every sing, single step you take along the journey of getting better and stronger and more gifted in the process of dating, you celebrate and you acknowledge your progress that way. If you only acknowledge the binary, I found my guy versus I didn't find my guy, this is gonna be a very painful experience. So you get your strength together and you take steps every single day to get close to what you want and you notice the smallest things that are making a difference and you commit to celebrating them. Hope this is helpful and useful. If you found value in this, it would mean a lot to me and to my channel if you click like and subscribe. And if you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, then make sure to watch the next video right here.